Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today, you'll learn how to set up a media server quickly and easily. Today, you'll know how to roll your own media server. Guitar that yeah, gets me in the Dan Luter's on the guitar, awesome stuff, mm -hmm. and he actually offered to teach me the song, so I'm really thrilled. About really? It. Yes. You play the guitar. Yes, I do. I as Actar Leo Laporte. This is Know How, the show where we show how mm -hmm. to do stuff. And uh, you picked a good one today. I think this is one a lot of people want to do. A lot of people have something like this, a Roku box, but we can get a little bit fancy if we're going to make our own media That's server. That's right. right? We, we got emails in from a lot of people. They wanted to know how to set up their own media server. Now, let me write the words media server on the board just so I have something to do. Sure. Well, what is a media server, I ask? Well, a media server is this concept where you have one computer with all your photos and movies and music. And basically, the concept is you can access your files anywhere within your own house. So you're not downloading several different copies on your laptop, on your phone, on your anything else. You have one central location in your house okay. to access your stuff. Now, nowadays, we also stream a lot of stuff from the cloud. Mm -hmm. So a media server today does more than just store stuff. It also accesses stuff on the internet, right? Yes, yeah, so you can have some streaming services built into these, uh, these front ends. We'll get into that in so a we moment. Can, we'll have local data or local media, I guess, and we'll have internet media or streaming media on our new media server. And there's all kinds of places where you can get media content, and I'm sure there are ways that you can somehow get them uh, a little bit on the gray market, I would assume. But if you want some DRM... You mean BitTorrent? I just said nothing like that. All, All right. I'm talking about is things that are <laughs> DRM-free. You can get DRM-free music on iTunes yes. and Amazon and I believe on Google Play. Right. But as well, if you have a lot of video, I don't know, podcasts or DRM stuff, DRM-free... DRM is copy protection. That's digital right. Digital rights management. Because a lot of these media servers, if you're going, going to run them, they're not going to be able to show you things that are copy protected. So what are the basics that we need for a media server? Is it hardware and software? What do we need? What do I have to get? Okay, so you're gonna, obviously we're going to need a computer. Okay. Uh, we're going to need... Can I just use a generic computer? Do I need a special kind of computer? Well, because there's so many different software options out there, you could pretty much use whatever, any, any kind of operating system you want. So okay. uh, if you're worried about transcoding video with your server, then you probably need a heavier duty machine. Okay. But uh, there's so many different options out there. There's Xbox Media Center used to be called Xbox Media Center. Now X it's XBMC. So this is these these are are these this is an operating system. This is software you'd run on an operating That's system. That's correct. This is software you run on an OS. XBMC started off as a project on the Xbox. If you modded your Xbox, you could run a media center on it. It was very similar to Microsoft Windows Media Center, but it it doesn't really work on everything. It works on a lot of a lot of uh, operating systems, but it's not super uh, portable right now. The key about XBMC is this was the granddaddy. This is began mm -hmm. what began a whole movement because it was open source. That's right. Yeah. And then there's like there's options like Myth TV. If you're a Linux junkie, you probably already know about Myth TV. It's more of a DVR styled uh, uh, application. There was also Sage TV was another popular one that ran on Windows. Yeah, these were these were Equivalents of Microsoft Media Center. Right. Yeah. And they obviously did the same media management that we're going to talk about. But today, we're picking Plex to focus on because Plex has, there's a lot of reasons why we're picking Plex. And I know a lot of people are going to say, it's too easy. Actually, that's one of the reasons <laughs> why reason. I wanted to talk about Plex can, today. Can I? It's funny because you came up with this independently, but I have to tell you from everybody I've ever talked to, every bit of research I've ever done, I've taught classes on this on cruise ships. This is the one everybody agrees is a must-have. Plex is great. Plex, it's free! It's free. It's cross-platform. It runs on Windows, Mac OS X, Linux. So theoretically, you could have a Linux box and have a free media server right on one machine. It costs you nothing other than the old uh, PC you have sitting around. So I like cross-platform. That's great. Plex also has some mobile application support. Now, the mobile apps, though, are $5 a piece, but there is support for Windows Phone. 
iOS and Android. So it does cover a lot of applications. And when you use a mobile application in this context, that would be a way of accessing the data, playing it back on your iPhone or your iPad. That's right. So okay. what your, your, your server, we're going to show you how to set up one in a moment. Okay. Your server is going to manage all your media. And the thing is, let's say I wanted to watch it on my tablet here. I don't have to load it to the tablet. It's going to serve it into this, and it's going to transcode it for us. It'll stream to the tablet. That's right. All right. So, it, so we don't have to keep syncing up, and we're not like, do I have a second copy? Do I, do I make a copy for the Nexus and one for the iPod? Right. And it's like, no. It handles all that. It handles right. that. So let me just recap. We're going to make a media server to store local media, movies, pictures, music, also to stream media from the Internet. There's a broad variety out there. We'll need two things. We'll need a PC, and it can be an old box. It could be a Linux, Windows, or Mac box, and we'll need software and we've looked at a bunch but we're going to today show you how to use the most popular which is called Plex. We're going to use Plex. We're going to install Plex right now. Let's do it. Really? On what? We're going to run on on OS 10. Okay. Uh, we have it's a plexapp.com/getplex if you want to download it. So we're going to take my screen and you can see okay, it's going to load up really slowly. So that's why I've already downloaded it. Installed it. it. So we're going to get How big is it? Is it hundreds of megabytes? It is, let's see, 70 megabytes that's for the not, Plex application. For the server it's 100 megabytes. So okay. it's not super large. And the server is what's running on your media server. Mm -hmm. And then on your clients, there'll be a Plex app running to access what's on the server. Exactly. Got it. So the, and, 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 sorry, forgive me. I'm not too bright. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to understand. I, I can run this on a desktop and run the desktop as a server, or I could put something in the closet that was running the Plex server. That's, that's the the favorite concept of putting a server in the closet. Right. If you're going to do that, just make sure you have ventilation. I, every time I heard that, I would read <laughs> about it. I'm like, it and crap and yeah, burn and, yeah, it's yeah, still right. a PC. Make sure it's cool, okay? Because <laughs> okay, you, I, don't, I don't want you to burn out your server. I you're going to love this but thing. But you don't, the, I guess the real point is you don't have to do a server in the closet. It could be on just your PC, right. on your Mac, and your, even, you're going to run it on a laptop. Yeah, so we're going to run it on this laptop. If we take my screen, you'll see me installing Plex right now. This is the media server. So I'm going to hit next. And you, yes, I've read this whole thing, uh, apparently. Let, There's, let me, Terms I just of service. Wanna, I'm going to write this here, client Agreed. and server, because I think those are important concepts, and I just want to underscore this is a client-server situation. So there's two pieces of software. There's the, Mex, uh, the Plex server, which is going to be on the machine that has the media on it, and that's going to serve data out to all your different clients, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android tablet, your PCs. Those run the, the client software. So right now we're installing server software on this laptop. That's correct. And the other thing is if you wanted to, this complicates things slightly, you could run the client on the server if you wanted to use it as a front end. But <laughs> Too confusing. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's tell Plex where my movies are located. Okay. We're going to hit a little plus button here. Now, do, does Plex do, you mentioned that Myth TV and Sage TV do TiVo-style recording of shows. Will Plex do that? Plex does not, as far as I know, have a DVR plug-in. Plex it's really not an on over-the-air uh, tool. It's, it's for more, existing content. It's more of a media manager. Okay. So if you think of it that way, if you have your own media already, the real step is you have to get the media somehow. So let's say you like podcasts and you go to iTunes or you use any other podcatcher. You could podcatcher. download it, you could BitTorrent it, you could rip it from CDs mm -hmm. or DVDs. As long as you're managing that and you tell Plex, like right now I'm telling Plex, my files are located in this folder. Now that's another point. Is iTunes, for instance, really is finicky about where you put files. It kind of wants them to be in a particular place. Does Plex care? Will it search your whole hard drive like Windows Media Server will? You can actually tell it that my music is located on like the... Everywhere. Everywhere, and it'll try yeah. to look for it. It's trying, and right now it's actually asking me if I want to Let's install some content plugins. Now Plex not only does the local media like we were talking about, but it will offer you suggestions like, hey, would you like to watch a Live Music Archive or Revision 3, our friends there, or seeing that TV, TED Talks. Okay, these we are- We gotta the get on that list. Twitch should be on that list. We could get, uh, there so is the, a Twitch plugin. So these are plugins, these are add-ons that you add to the server mm -hmm. that connect, say, Revision 3 to the server so that you can watch those on the clients. You'll be watching them, you'll be watching a streaming version of it. You will not be downloading it. So, so that's- servers plus plugins. I'm gonna write plugins. There's another plugin for audio to get the audio from uh, from your PC over to your tablet or something. There's a virtual sound card. It's called Soundflower. It installs itself when you are Soundflower doing this. Soundflower is a Mac only tool, but right. it's very handy. Yeah. So you can tell. Do you want Plex to collect anonymous data? Sure. Why not? Are you most of these plugins cross-platform? I know Plex is. I guess. I most believe of the plugins so. Yeah. Are also if they're written for Plex, they're right. run, written for Plex. So we've got server. We've got our plugins. We're installing those right now. And that is going to serve our local media and streaming media out to our clients. And we're going to have a bunch of clients. And that's, they all have to be running the Plex 
client software, right? Right. The Plex client software, like I said, runs on OS 10. It runs on Linux. It runs on Windows, as does the server. So both pieces of software run everywhere. But even more interesting about Plex is that they make, make available a free Roku app. So if you wanted oh. to watch your content on your television, you don't that have to hook up. That explains why we have a Roku here. This is a Plex client. Right. So the thing is, instead of having to hook up a PC, which can cost a lot of money directly to your television and you know, r using a remote, you can get a cheap Roku box. That's great. And you, you can actually try to get this Actually, up we can see it. I'll show you. Yeah, let me... Let me uh... What number was the TV with? Did you say 14? 14. Yeah. So, so this TV is plugged into this Roku box mm -hmm. and is actually going, is now a Plex. You've made this a Plex client, That's, basically. Right. It's going to be a client right now. Uh, now, where do I get this? Is this in the Roku channel store? Yes, it actually is. Okay. Now, you can, you can install it several different ways, but the easiest thing to do is go into the channel store. I believe it's, it's either very popular in the most popular section right. or the featured section. It's pretty easy to find if you just go looking for it. So currently... This is one of the reasons you choose Plex, is, is flexibility like this is great. And the Roku box, I don't know if you guys... 60, 70 bucks. I'm a huge nerd, so I don't mind putting a PC, I don't mind hooking it up to my but television. It has a lot of complexity, but, yeah. But everybody in the house, as far as I know, loves the Roku when it comes to interface. It's really easy. It's pretty, it's pretty stable. It's more stable than a lot of PCs I've built. So I, I like recommending the Roku box because again if it goes something it's goes a, wrong this is a good choice power. again this is a client among others there's the five dollar apps for iOS and so forth this is the Roku client and we're showing you right now okay. so you're running just to recap a server on your Mac right now mm -hmm. there's media content on your Mac you're all on the same Wi-Fi network that's right say on the same network <laughs> that's important and the Roku is on that network running the Plex app is going to be able to see content and play it back, if all goes well, from your Mac. So when you install the media server, uh, there's a media ma manager. So you can say, right, let's okay, take a look at that. go to my screen, we can show the media manager okay. from Plex. Now, maybe, it, well, Plex was gonna go out, try to get your files information so you can easily access it. Now, if you like, take a look on my screen, it says, I have avatar here. I don't have Avatar. That's actually Iron Man. So if I want to change it... What? So, yeah. how do, so it does its best to figure out what it is and it made a mistake. It can make a mistake, okay. but you can, you can edit the metadata and change it. This is Iron Man. This is Iron Man. There are, the, one of the nice things about Plex is its ability to go out and go to places like CDDB and IMDB and get from those databases information about the movie. So you may not know the year mo director or stars, but it can look it up and it will populate those fields. Yeah, that's really... Isn't that great? It's really beneficial because you don't want to sit there and write all this stuff out yourself. And so, let's see. Let's actually run something off of the Roku right now. All right. So Colin, now, we're going to... He has the remote. <laughs> you have the remote? Okay. We, we only had the phone. We couldn't find the remote. Ah, we lost our remote. All right. So Colin is now going to watch TV. He's our technical director. He's using the, this is the Plex app now running on a Roku Let's box. Let's go into the movie section where we have uh, something called i5. Actually. So now this is going to be an interesting challenge. So this is data. This, this is data on your laptop. That's serving off Mac. my laptop right now. Oh, that's so cool. So we and can run that. It. So we can hit play. And, and very much like Roku with anything else. Netflix or whatever, it's retrieving it and it's playing. And there we go. We have it playing right now. So the thing is, is so cool. There's some, I love this. And there is some DRM free content you can get out there. So don't worry about that. I mean, I'm sure you, there are different ways to get your stuff, but and because it's playing over the network from your laptop, the quality is superb. This is the 720p version. It looks great. That's I'm, so right now. I've had that file on my on my computer. It's going through the Roku, going to the television, and you have access to that. That is really cool. It is. Right. It's pretty cool because, again, the Roku is so cheap. Right. And it's a really fun interface. You know the remotes are going to work for it. Right. But if you wanted to hook up a PC, what does the Plex desktop application look like? It's, well, you happen to have it on this desktop. It's, it's a hefty-looking application. It's built for a 10-foot interface. Very, it's very similar, or is it different from the... Uh, this, is, this is the Roku interface. This is the Roku interface. I'm going to run Plex right now. It's right. going to go full screen, and there we go. Oh. Here we go slowly. It looks a lot like it's a uh, media center style interface. Right. So we have video channels. These are the streaming uh, video options we just installed when we started it. Those are the plugins. Now okay. these Plex works with IR black, IR uh, adapters, or if you have an Apple device, it'll work with the Apple remote right away. Right. So you could have a full flesh computer attached and use this interface. I find it to be this version is, is Plex 12. I find it to be very stable. As for video support. 
It does play MP4s. If your computer can handle it, I wouldn't suggest video TSs in this, though. If you have backed up DVDs, it doesn't handle that very well. The so old versions used to. If you copied the VOB files and the mm -hmm. TS files from your DVD onto your hard drive, this is not going to be the ideal way to play. This is not, definitely not. You might want to transcode with Handbrake or something into an MP4, and then it'll play back just fine. That's right. If you can get the, the movie file off the DVD, right. that's probably your best bet when it comes to something like Plex. Can I ask you a favor? Yes. I should have asked you this before we started. How do I add the Twit plugin? Because I should really have Twit on my Plex. Add Twit to this? Oh, that's no problem. Let's go to... So this would be, if it doesn't come with the plugins automatically you can go to a channel directory and find other channels now it's going out to the internet so we saw the featured ones but you could also search for uh, other let's categories see. now let's see if i could find it because it's slow it's loading these in yeah so uh, it's alphabetical we're gonna go find twit holy cow look there's, at all of that there's a lot of plugins and there's oh a lot of my goodness tons of content so let me try to find twit.tv install and this is how quick it goes so we're gonna install and it should be going so that's really cool. So you went out on the internet within the client application software, found the plugin that you wanted, and you could see there were hundreds there, and you've installed it. And now do I have a twit.tv app? You should. And the other thing is, once you install the app on Plex on this device, it'll also show oh, up on your is. Roku. So it'll show up right there. So, it's, so this is another way to watch on the Roku. Not only that, this is even crazier. There's, there's a way to watch video on, let's say you're watching it on your laptop. Wait a minute. You installed it in the server or on the client here? I installed it actually on the server. Okay, got it. That's what it'll do. That's it'll why it's showing it up on Roku. Yes. But it now will show up in the client here. That's right. In the client on the Roku because this and happens, any other device. Because this happens to be both. Got it. But you got can it. install it through the front end, which is the, which is the client, and it'll make the server do what you want it to do. It has the ability to allow you to start watching a movie. So let's say I want to watch Iron Man here on my, on my laptop. Let's see if I could get this moving. Okay, there's the Iron Man. So we're going to go th it through a couple it's minutes. It's Avatar still. You'd obviously fix I haven't, this. I yeah. haven't changed that yet. Yeah. But if I stop the movie here, okay. I'm able to go to the Roku and pick no. up the same movie at the, at the, t at the time I stopped watching well, actually, it. I guess that makes sense because the server knows where you are. Yeah. Got it. So it's even, I mean, when you're doing this with your tablet, or you're doing this around your house, it's going to show you it's on deck down here. or It's right down here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is partially, partially watched. watched. And it tells you where you can resume, resume from. So one minute in. It's, it's got some really cool features like this. And did you see, it did have the metadata. Now you'll replace that metadata mm -hmm. because it got it incorrectly. But that's really cool. That is really neat. And this is really simple. And so I'm going to show off the mobile app, because why not? Right. There's a mobile app. It Here's costs, Nexus 7. This is the Android version, $5. It, it costs $5 on the, on the Play Store. It's $5 actually on every store. Is it? It must be a separate tablet app. And, uh, and, for yes. Android, yeah. It's a separate app. You have to buy that. Every Everything on the desktop is free, but when you get to the tablets or the mobile space, you have to pay. So we're going to go backwards. And actually, this is not on our local network. I'm getting content from my house because you have the ability, if you want, you can sign up with something called MyPlex, which is for free service. You might have to open up a port or two. It's very dependent on the kind of router you have. So to get into the configuration, we will have links to all of that in our show notes at twit.tv slash kh on how to set that up. Is there a fee for that MyPlex service? No, there is no that's fee for free? that. That's absolutely free. Oh, that's really good. So I'm going to try to watch something. Let's see. I want to watch uh, TV shows. So this is kind of a sling box kind of for your Plex server. Right. I mean, obviously, this is downloaded content. Right. So apparently, I have Archer on this. Who knows what's going to show up? Th and this is coming from your house. It do Yeah, it is. That's the fun <laughs> thing. So it's going to be running right now. So it's running through the internet. Okay, this is not this is not on our local network. So, so it's going to be a little slower. Yeah. So it might take a little bit for it to load, but hopefully it will. But this show is great this. for the kids that are as you travel. Um, presumably, if you were really clever, you could set up a DVR capability, maybe using Windows Media mm -hmm. Center, take those recordings, add them to your Plex Media Library automatically, and have them available to you using my Plex as you travel I, I used to do this with my Elgato TV. I would turn it, it makes an MP4 without DRM, have it put in a folder that Plex wow. is indexing, because it'll index from time to time, right. and you can access it. And in today's world, when it comes Look to devices that. that are all sealed like this, it doesn't matter if you have storage or not. This is what you want, and this is one of the reasons I think Google made this with only 8 and 16 gigs, is they figured the future is this kind of streaming. Uh, in this case, you're streaming from your own server running out of your house. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, so obviously the, the performance is going to be better within your own home network. Right. You can do this in your house, or if you want to go outside, there's that option. There's, it's just the easiest option I've found so far, and I know, 
I know you guys are going to write There's in. There's like, the boxy <laughs> folks. Mm -hmm. There's the XBMC folks. Everybody's got their favorite. But I agree with you. Plex is a very simple, easy, and most importantly, highly capable client and server system that really works. Can I run through the notes? Sure. So let's uh, talk very quickly about what you just learned. We're setting up a media server with the ability to take local media on our hard drive or streaming media from the internet, places like Twit and Revision 3, and make them accessible to you. You'll need a couple of things, uh, hardware, computer hardware, could be a laptop, desktop, software, and there's a lot of choices in software. We talked about XBMC, there's Boxy, Myth TV, Sage TV. We're gonna show you today, or we did show you today, how to use Plex, which works on Windows, OS 10, and Linux. Plex is what we call a client server setup. You'll set up the Plex server on a computer where your media lives, add plugins for capabilities like Twit, TED Talks, things like that, and they will serve out to a variety. You see, you have all these clients. There could be an iPhone, an iPad, an Android tablet, even, and I love this, a Roku box. But these are all on your local network, and I think this is a really nice feature. If you want to do it out over the internet, you can use a MyPlex server, or it's software that you put on your it's server. It's a service. It's a service. Mm -hmm. That it probably is NAT traversal so that it knows how to connect the two points together. There's a setup utility that may yeah, or may not that makes work. Sense. So MyPlex then puts all of this content from your server out on the internet where you can use clients as well. Very cool. And the total cost of that, well, there's five bucks for the Android or iPhone mm -hmm. app, uh, whatever you paid for that computer, but essentially, it costs you nothing. It's really, really easy. That's well, the big I thing. Love and this. it's cheap. And like, uh, the funny thing is, when, when, when we got the emails about this, I was like, uh, doesn't everybody already use something? I mean, because I've been I've been running this kind of thing since like you know a while ago, and before they even had an app for Roku, I still have a computer hooked up to my TV. I didn't even know it was this easy Isn't at this that point. Great. And the other thing is, by the way, there's some with those plugins. There's like a Hulu plugin. So let's say you don't pay for Hulu Plus, you can go through Plex and watch Hulu, or even watch it on maybe you have a Flash content that doesn't run on your iPad. You can run it through Plex. It's there's so many different plugins that you can get, which are free. And you can just, it's just, they're so extensible. I it's kind of a it. rabbit hole once you set up this basic thing. And that's the thing, just set up the basic thing. You'll find more and more and more and more you can do with it. You might want to add a remote control. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things you can do with it. Thank you, Ayaz. You showed us how to set up our own media server, yeah. and that was easy. Yeah, and by the way, guys, if you thought any of those steps were too fast, or they're, you know, I want to watch it again, or I want to know exactly how we did this. How could I do that? Twit.tv slash KH. We have all the show notes. We have links to everything. If you're like, wait a minute. Aren't there other projects? Aren't there other ways or other things I want to do? Yeah, we have the old episodes available there, yeah. too. So yeah. go to twit.tv slash KH. You know, we have this available for demand, on demand. You can download it. Watch it in HD. If you want to see our faces in glorious HD, <laughs> you can. That's on your, your Flex server. <laughs> that's your problem. Uh, you can, though. It's available right now. Uh, but, yeah, so you can get all our notes, and it's right there. And it, they're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to follow along with our episodes. We do know how 3 p.m. on Thursday, Pacific time at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 2200 UTC. We do love it if you watch live. I'm watching the chat room. You can tell I'm always mm -hmm. looking over here. I get the feedback from the chat room. It's great. But again, on demand is available all the time on our website and everywhere podcasts are downloadable. Well, now that you know how. Go out and do it. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. What are we doing next week? Next week, we're doing Adventures in Linux. I'm going to oh. use, we're going to re, like, use an old PC, and we're going to make it alive. Let's install Linux next week. I don't know how. See you then. Bye-bye.